Hi everyone, welcome to our daily learning video. Today we're going to be talking about letter I and I is for insects. So let's take a look at the letter I. There it is, and look at all those insects. Can you say I? I. Does your name have a letter I? Hmm, if your name has an I, stand up. If your name has an I, stand up. If your name has an I, if your name has an I, if your name has an I, stand up. Well, this is the uppercase I and the lowercase I. And the way we're gonna decorate I today is we're gonna put some itchy dots on letter I. So I'm just taking a red marker and putting lots of itchy dots on I. Oh, did you see my ring? <laughs> it's not a real spider. We're gonna talk all about insects and you might be surprised. We're gonna learn something about the spider during science today. Okay, that's what letter I looks like. And now we're going to write the letter I. So to make the letter I, the uppercase letter I, you're gonna make a number one. And then you're going to make a line across the top and the bottom. One with a top and a bottom. On the handwriting house, this is an uppercase I. So that means we're going to go from the top upstairs to the bottom green carpet downstairs. And we're going to give it a top and a bottom. One with a top and a bottom. And this is a great time for you to get the handwriting paper, the links below so you can get a copy and you can practice right along with me or you could practice for homework and just watch right now. One with a top and a bottom. One with a top and a bottom. So that's the uppercase letter I. And now we're gonna talk about the lowercase letter I, but first I wanna tell you something. Sometimes I go outside and a mosquito bites me and it's itchy, it leaves an itchy dot. Well, did you know that the little I has an itchy dot too? You're gonna make a little number one with an itchy dot. That's how you make a lowercase or little I. On the handwriting house, you're gonna make that little I or the little one downstairs. And then you're gonna put the itchy dot upstairs like this. One with an itchy dot. One with an itchy dot. Now let me show you what some students like to do. They like to put the itchy dot right on the top of the one, but that's actually not the right way. We're going to make that itchy dot kind of go up into the air, kind of like a ball. Just toss that ball up into the sky. One with an itchy dot. Actually, that itchy dot goes right in the middle of the upstairs. One with an itchy dot. One with an itchy dot. Okay, that's the lowercase i. And now we're going to talk about what letter i sounds like. But first I need to ask you, do you like lollipops? I like lollipops too. I love lollipops. You know who else does? My friend Icky I. My friend Icky I loves lollipops. He eats all lollipops for breakfast. He eats lollipops for lunch. He eats lollipops for dinner. But when he eats all those lollipops, he gets so sticky and he says, eh, eh, eh. Can you do that? Do your hand like this. That's our hand motion for today. Eh, 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 like a sticky, icky lollipop. Well, I'm going to, I'm hoping that whenever you see an I, especially when you start to read, that you'll think about that lollipop and then you'll remember that I says eh, 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 like a lollipop. You can see the letter I hiding in the picture. Can you spot it? It's his lollipop, see? I kind of looks like a lollipop. 
And so hopefully that'll help you remember. I said, eh, eh, eh. but we're going to play a game just to help that sound stick even further. So I want you to tell me what letter I says, eh, eh, eh. and I'll put an itchy dot on my face if you get it right. Okay. What does letter I say? Eh, eh, eh. Oh, you put an itchy dot on Miss Kathy. What does letter I say? Eh, eh, eh. Oh, another itchy dot. Oh, you're doing a great job. What does letter I say? Oh, another itchy dot. Oh, my goodness. What does I say? Eh, eh, eh. Oh, you just put another itchy dot on Miss Kathy. Let's do it again. What does I say? Eh, eh, eh. Oh, another itchy dot. I'm getting so itchy. What does letter I say? Eh, eh, eh. Like itchy dots. I says eh, 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 and I'm so itchy. So that's what letter I says, and you did a great, great, great job. I'm going to get all these itchy dots off of me because it's time now for math. For math today, we're going to be talking about patterns. And patterns are just something that repeats again and again and again. So we're going to look at these insects. Let me pull this up for you to see. OK, and we're going to see if we can figure out what the pattern is. And then we're going to try to figure out what comes next, OK? So I see a caterpillar, a caterpillar, and then a butterfly. Oh, and then I see a caterpillar again. So I think we found the pattern. Caterpillar, caterpillar, butterfly. Caterpillar, caterpillar, what's next? Butterfly, good job. Let's do the next one, okay? I see a bumblebee, butterfly, butterfly. Oh, then it goes back to bumblebee. So I know what's repeating. I found my pattern. Bumblebee, butterfly, butterfly. Bumblebee, butterfly, butterfly. Good job. What bug comes next to finish the pattern? I see a beetle and a dragonfly. And then, oh, a beetle again. So beetle, dragonfly, beetle, dragonfly, beetle, what's next? Dragonfly, good work. You're so good at patterns. Okay, I see a dragonfly caterpillar and a ladybug, and then back to the dragonfly. So now I've found my pattern. Dragonfly, caterpillar, ladybug. Dragonfly, caterpillar, ladybug. Good work. Let's do one more, okay? Butterfly, caterpillar. Back to the butterfly so I know what's repeating. Butterfly, caterpillar. Butterfly, caterpillar, butterfly, caterpillar. Good job. You did such a great job with patterns. I think I'm going to give you a prize, a patterns prize. So I want you to lean your head over like that and I'll put this on you, okay? Congratulations, you're great at patterns. <laughs> and that prize was for you. Now we're going to do our color for this week, which is the color blue. And I bet you didn't know how many bugs there are that are blue. Take a look at this. Wow, there are a lot of bugs that are blue. Look at the blue butterfly and the beetle and ladybug. Point to your favorite blue insect. Oh, I like that one too. Those are beautiful. And what color are they? They're blue. B-L-U-E spells blue. B-L-U-E spells blue. Hi-ho, did you know? B-L-U-E spells blue. And that was our color time for today. 
Now for shape practice, we've been working this week on the square. The square has four sides and all of those sides are the same size. So I'm going to show you some shapes and I want to see if you can point to the shape that is a square. Can you find the square? You're right, there's the square. Well, let's match the square insect to the shape. There it is. Now, can you find the star? Good job. Let's match the star insect to the star shape. Can you find the triangle? It looks like a bumblebee. There it is. And there's the triangle shape. Let's match this trapezoid. That's what this is called. And we'll learn more about a trapezoid later this school year. But can you find the trapezoid shape? Nice work. Okay, well, that was our shape practice today. We're just making sure you still remember what a square is. Now we're going to do a little music and movement. Now I'm going to show you just a tiny bit of this song because it's not my song, but I want to give you a chance. I'll put the link below to listen to this song today for music and movement. It's very cute. Let's do it. but I'm going to put the link below so that you can listen to that song for your music and movement time today. But right now it is time for art and we are going to make a caterpillar from an egg carton. So let's head to the art table, everyone. I actually have two ideas for art today. The first idea is to take an egg carton and we're going to turn it into a caterpillar. So I just have a little piece of a pipe cleaner and I'm going to poke it through the top of this egg carton. And those are gonna be the little antenna for my caterpillar. Then I'm going to take a marker and draw on a little face. And then finally, I think I'm going to put some pom-pom balls on the top of my caterpillar. But if you don't have pom-pom balls, you can leave this part out. Ta-da! So there you have it. We made a little egg carton caterpillar. One more idea for you to do for art today would be to go outside and look for a rock. You can turn that rock into an insect. I'm painting mine with red. I'm going to turn him into a little ladybug. I think once it's dry, I'll put some little black dots. So make a little rock insect today or an egg carton caterpillar. That was our art time. Now let's do some science. For science today, we're going to be talking about insects and what makes an insect. First of all, you need to know that God made the insects. So he made some really cool creations when he made insects because they're so very neat. Let's learn all about them right now. The first thing that we can learn is that insects have six legs when they're an adult. Let's count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another thing that you can learn about insects is that they have three body parts. Let's count the body parts. There's the head and the abdomen and the thorax. So insects have three body parts. Most insects have wings like this bumblebee. Not all insects have wings, but most do. Now I want you to take your hand and I want you to feel it. Do you feel something hard in there? Those are your bones. We have our bones on the inside and our bones are, all of our bones together are called our skeleton. Our skeleton is on the inside, but not insects. An insect skeleton is on the outside and we call this an exoskeleton. It's just a hard outer shell that protects the insect. Insects have a pair of antenna. A pair means two. Let's 
count the insects antenna. One, two. Now we're gonna play a little game. I want you to decide if it's an insect. If it is an insect, thumbs up. But if it's not an insect, thumbs down. Remember to look for six legs, two antenna, and three body parts, if you can see them. And most insects have wings, so that's another clue. Is it an insect? Let's count the body parts. One, two, three. Okay, so far so good. Let's count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two antenna. There's one and there's one. So is it an insect? Thumbs up, it is an insect. Good job. Is this an insect? No, thumbs down, that's a kitty cat. That is not an insect. Is this an insect? Look closely. Thumbs up, it is an insect. Good job, and I even see some wings. I definitely see wings on this one. Is this an insect? See if you can count six legs. Two antenna. And it's hard to see the body parts because of all the fluffy fur on this insect. But thumbs up, it is an insect. Is this an insect? Can you see three body parts? Six legs. Two antenna. It is an insect, thumbs up. And did you know that ladybugs even have wings? Is this an insect? No, this is a puppy. This is not an insect. Is, oh, this is tricky. Is this an insect? Hmm, it looks like an insect, but let's count the legs, okay? Remember, an insect has six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This has eight legs, not six, so is it an insect? No, a spider is not an insect, it's an arachnid. That comes from a different family. But wow, God made some pretty cool arachnids and insects. And that was cool, a cool, fun game. I liked playing it with you. Would you like to see a real insect? I have one to show you for science. So let's head back over to the table and let's see if we can look at the parts on a real insect. So here we have a real insect. It's not alive. We're just gonna use this for science today to observe. And I wanna tell you something super cool that happened to me today. I needed an insect for our science class. And so I walked outside and guess what? This was right on my steps. It was already dead. It was perfect for observing and God provided it for us. So that was pretty cool. God is really cool that way. You might like to go outside and look for insects today. God created insects and maybe even pray and ask him to show you an insect so you can observe it and praise him for his mighty and uh, special creations. Okay, we're gonna look for the wings on this insect. So I'll bring it a little closer. I do see the wings. God provided the perfect insect because this is a nice big one. So you can see on right here on the front, there are some big eyes. These are big compound eyes. That means they have lots of parts. It might be hard for you to see, but this insect has three body parts, the head, in the middle part, and there's the thorax, which is that end part. Let's flip it over and see if we can count the legs. All right, so I see one, two, three legs over here, four, five, six. So this is an insect. It has six legs, three body parts, and even wings, and there's some little tiny antenna. So today for science, if you'd like to, go outside and look for some insects. 
You might even want to start a science journal. Draw what you see, and then I'd love for you to um, share with me in the comments or on my website. Get a grown up to help you share with us what you find. Let's come back around now and do a story time. Well, today for story time, we're going to be reading about two insects. This story is called The Ant Asshopper. It's an Aesop's fable. One hot summer day, an ant was working. He was working very hard. A grasshopper was nearby. He was lying under the shade of a big tree. The grasshopper ate and played all day long. He saw the ant passing by and asked, Hello, ant, what are you carrying? I'm carrying nuts and berries to bring home, answered the ant. All day long? Huh, what's your hurry? asked the grasshopper. The winter is coming soon, replied the ant. I need to gather food for the cold, frosty winter. Go ahead, my boy, not me, said the grasshopper. I'm just going to sit here and relax. But soon the winter did come. The field was cold and frosty. There was no food left in the field. The ant was resting inside his cozy, warm house. He had no worries because he had plenty of food for the entire winter. But not the grasshopper. For him, the winter was terrible. He walked all day long looking for food to eat. I think I'm gonna starve, he said. He walked and walked. He finally arrived at the ant's house. Outside, the grasshopper saw the ant and his family laughing and playing. How happy they all look. I wish I had saved some food for the winter, he said. <sighs> Suddenly, the ants heard a knock at the door. Who could it be on this cold winter night? The ants wondered. Who is it? asked the ant. It's me, the grasshopper. It's cold out here and I'm starving, answered the grasshopper. The ant answered the door at once. Come in and join us, said the ants. They welcomed the grasshopper. They gave him enough food to eat. After the meal, the grasshopper said, thank you. And you were right, ant. I should have prepared food for the winter. The ant just smiled and said, you're very welcome. The end. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed our creepy crawly day today. We talked about I is for insects and we learned what letter I says. What does I say? Eh, eh, eh. It was fun to make a caterpillar out of an egg carton. And don't forget to go outside for science today and look for some insects. I enjoyed doing insect patterns with you for math. I'll see you next time. Come back for our daily learning video. Goodbye.